As parents, we like to give our children every opportunity and let them have experiences we never had when we were kids. But sometimes, despite our best intentions, we overestimate their readiness, as Tiana Novinger and her husband discovered on August 16, 1989, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. When Casey Novinger was 11 years old, his parents bought him an ATV for Christmas to share with his older brother, Clint. I was in the garage with Kristen and Jason working on my cycle. It was getting late, and Casey's mom was getting tired of hearing the motorcycle going around the house, I guess. Casey! I had gone out on the porch because I wanted Casey to come in. I said, I've heard enough of the cycle, and I think the neighbors have heard enough of it. And I had told him to come in now. But before Casey did go in, he decided to make one more trip around the property. I guess he tried to go up the bank and try and get to the top. Well, I heard the engine stop, then I heard faint yells, and I knew something must be wrong. Man, it is. Come on. From where I was standing, we could see the thing upside down. I just saw blood everywhere. I never saw that much blood in my life. I saw the motorcycle line on him and the blood coming out of his mouth and his nose and his ears. I knew it was serious. You all right? All of a sudden, I heard these loud, shrill screams. I knew right away it was something awful. So I jumped up and went to run towards the door when I met Clint. And he said, Mom, Casey's been hurt really bad. And he just ran to the telephone, and I ran out the door. He wanted me to help him up, but I told him to just stay there and lay down and wait for help. All you can do is just stay there, man. I saw Casey lying across the street, and there was a lot of blood. I knew that it wasn't just a little accident. I knew it was very serious, and I tried to keep calm, but inside I was torn apart completely. Clint called 911 to report the accident. Take it easy. We're going to get somebody right there. Emergency units in the area were immediately dispatched. One of the first rescuers to respond was volunteer paramedic Mike Kurtz. I was on my way home from work, and we were dispatched to this motorcycle accident with a child possibly being unconscious and with severe head lacerations. Golf Med, Chief 12, responding. So at this time, I did a U-turn and went directly to the scene. I love you, baby. I yelled to the children to please go and get Grandma Patrick. He was in shock and he was just talking, but he was saying things that were very real to me. He was saying, please help me up and please rub my stomach. And it really hurt me to see him like that. Casey's grandmother, Gladys Patrick, was visiting the family from out of town that week. I'm a nurse, I'm a grandmother, and I know there's blood coming out of his ear. Oh, my God, that could be brain damage. What can I do? Oh, what can, can I, I do? do? Right. I was thinking, I've got to be the nurse now, not the grandmother. We've got to keep him quiet. We can't move him. He's got to lay still. I'll be here soon. Okay. Okay. At that time, Casey looked like he was losing consciousness, and I yelled to the children, please go get Mr. Frank. Okay. Oh, Dr. Okay. Frank, okay. please come help. Okay. Okay. Please. When I arrived, the one thing that I noticed immediately was that the boy was in his mother's arms, which is a very natural instinct, but obviously was the absolute worst thing that could have been done. He should have been left at the scene of the accident until the paramedics arrived. Dr. Frank came over and took Casey's head out of my lap and went to lay it down for me. He told me that he should be laying flat. I then checked him as best as I could quickly, found that he had no obvious fractures of his limbs, but he did have blood coming out of his left ear, which is potentially a very grave circumstance. It usually indicates that there's a skull fracture at the base of their head. He just kept getting paler, and I knew that he had lost a lot of blood, and to me, the essence was time. Within eight minutes of the call, paramedic Kurtz arrived on the scene. When I arrived on the scene, I could tell that it was a severe type call because the child was barely moving. At this time, we did an initial survey, and it looked pretty grim then because 
of this profuse bleeding coming from his ears. He said, I love you, Mommy, and I love you, Grandma. And he started drifting off at that point. I said, are those going to be his last words? Kurtz radioed for an air ambulance. Go ahead and dispatch lifeline, class one head trauma, obvious open skull fracture. I didn't think it was really that bad at first, but then as things went on, I thought, you know, something permanent might happen. That's, that's really my main worry, something permanent was going to happen to him. Hang in, Casey. I was mad at the motorcycle. I was real mad. At this time, the basic life support ambulance from Dolphin arrived on the scene, and we could start immobilizing the child before loading the patient into the helicopter. Jerry, go ahead and hold the head here. Come on, let's get okay, him on. Okay, Roger, 11-year-old class one head trauma patient. Okay. Open skull. Just prior to loading the patient into the ambulance, the child's level of consciousness even decreased more. We have to be very concerned because this is an early stage of impending um, brain damage or possibly death occurring at this time. All I could think in my mind was, as long as Casey lives, I can handle anything. He is very special. I can't say enough about him. A nearby golf course became the landing zone for the Lifeline helicopter. We knew that the patient needed to get out of there right away. One of the terms we use is hot loading, and that was requested in this case. And hot loading means that keep the engines running, we're not going to be that long. One of the men from the helicopter came towards me and said, you cannot go with Casey in the helicopter. You must go down in a car and you can meet him down there. So the whole way to the hospital, I just kept praying that he made it and he was OK. Head injuries can be very tough to diagnose, and you never know what the outcome is. It still continually amazes me when some patients die and other people live. Four minutes later, they arrived at Hershey Medical Center where a trauma team was waiting. Chest is intact, uh, no extremity. At the family's request, their close friend, trauma surgeon Jay Smith, was also called in. What do we have? Okay, this one of the first things that went through my mind was that this was all so preventable. Since he didn't have any injuries outside of the head, he would have basically had no injuries. If he'd been wearing a helmet, even though he wanted to just ride around the house before he put the vehicle back in the garage, just that little extra time of putting on the helmet would have prevented the entire injury. It was obvious that the bone fragments had actually been pushed inward there was some brain tissue actually in the field that had to be removed that had been damaged. The eardrum itself had been totally smashed and was uh, in fragments. After a four-hour brain surgery, Casey was moved to pediatric ICU. I really felt like maybe he would not make it through if I was away from him. I thought if I could be there holding his hand and just be by his side, he would probably make it. His parents stayed at his bedside throughout the 24-hour coma. The next morning when I went in, Casey just opened his eyes and says, hi, Mom, and he said it so clear. And because he knew who I was and because of his voice and the way he talked, I knew at that point he was going to be OK. Casey still suffers some headaches and has a 10% hearing loss. I'm thankful to all the doctors and my grandma, my mom, and my dad, and Jason and Clint just for helping me and being there in the hospital all the time. Okay. I still like driving motorcycles and stuff, and I want to be a race car driver, but I'll know I'll always have my safety equipment. Because if I would have had my helmet on, I probably could have just got up and walked away.